to know and be aware of as we head into 2015. And so with that, uh, first part of our presentation is to talk about some of the tax issues. Now, Alan Goodman, CPA, who normally joins us on these uh, webinars, uh, turns out I understand that he's not able to be with us due to a last minute issue. So at this point, I'd like to turn over the presentation to Rohit Arora, the CEO of Biz2Credit. Uh, Rohit, perhaps you can walk us through these slides. Yeah, uh, Anita, thanks for uh, uh, this. And you know, I just wanted to uh, start with something I think which is very interesting is, guys, you know, thanks for everybody for attending the webinar. I think uh, you know we have been in this business for last uh, six years. Uh, started the company in uh, 2008. Uh, this is the best year, and I'm seeing for small businesses ever. Uh, I I would say last five six years, you know after starting the company. So I think it's a great time if you're a small business owner and uh, and I think things are very positive, things look good. And obviously, you know, the tech season is coming up. So we thought that, you know, we should start with that and then move into other uh, pieces of it. So obviously, you know, uh, tech codes are extremely challenging even for accountants and especially for small business owners. And I'm, and I'm myself a small business owner. Uh, and I consider myself to be financially pretty literate, but still, tax codes are one thing which is you know are, are are so complicated that it even flies over my head. So, so I think that's something that is very important. We see a lot of small businesses, you know, who have issues with the tax authorities, and one big reason is that they don't hire the right accountants. So, my advice to all small business owners is, you know, invest money in hiring the right accountant and the right lawyer, because that's never going to hurt you. Uh, and I think that's one challenge that we see. So obviously, you know, because uh, the professional accountants are more in tune with the changing tax laws. A lot of stuff is changing in 2015, especially with Obamacare also coming in. And I think uh, what uh, we have to do is that, you know, we have to, as small business owners, be fully cognizant and, and responsible because the IRS is not going to come and ever, you know, listen to our story saying that, you know, oh, we didn't know about the te tax laws, so nothing can be done. And I think some of the things that our CPA uh, partner have put to together is that, you know, what you can do. So like uh, personal side, you know, small businesses have a retirement account opportunity, which can help them in a better te tax planning. And, uh, you know, and this is something, you know, that the whole SEP IRA uh, or the simple IRA uh, is there then business owners can also subscribe to the individual 401ks. Uh, so all this is going to help you because if you put money from your business, uh, that it counts uh, against your, uh, or it's deducted directly from your you know, business income. So then you know you don't have to pay taxes on it. And also there is no taxation on the personal side till you are making the required contribution. So that's helpful, you know, uh, for it because uh, as a lot of small business owners, you know, including me, you know, we pay very little attention to our whole future, you know, retirement plans. You know, very few small business owners who run their own companies have a 401k plan for themselves. You know, they might have it for their employees. So I think that's what you know. Uh, the whole advice is that you know, if you if you are looking for the right tax deferred vehicles, then one of the best ways is to have a retirement uh, plan and, and retirement account for your for the, for yourself also. So treat yourself as an employee of the company. And that is something very important. Yeah. Yeah. Then, you know, uh, every year there are a lot of tax deductions which go away. And especially this year is very important because what had happened in 2009, you know, when the economy was in big recession, the government had come out with some of the tax deferred uh, measures which were applicable for next five years. And a lot of them are going to expire in end of 2014. Especially, you know, one example is that you know, uh, if you're buying equipment, you could have uh, taken the tax deferred treatment for next five years. So, a lot of rules are changing again with Obamacare uh, getting more effective in 2015. A lot of tax issues will change. So again, you know, having a good accountant and and I think at least having a conversation with your accountant sometime in early January, if you haven't done it till now. Because right now accountants have more time, but do it in early January plan thing. Because one thing that we have seen 
with a lot of small business owners is that you know they wait till the last minute. They wait till the last minute to file their tax returns. They don't do a very good tax planning. They very little visibility about the tax treatment that they are subjected to, and a lot of it is rush work. And if you go to your CPA on March 15th, which is the you know, date for most of the businesses to file their taxes, a lot of them take an extension which goes up to next six months. So we see a lot of them are either approaching their accountant during that first or second week of March or first or second week of, sept of September. So that we have seen, you know, that leads to a lot of issues, the mistakes and uh, not the right way of doing things. And then it comes and haunts them back. So I think that's something very important. Give your CPA some time, you know, also to understand the things and, and have a discussion prior to uh, the last minute rush, because I think that's, that's going to be very helpful. And uh, I would uh, add, Rohit, that uh, the IRS just announced, just this past uh, week or so, the uh, new mileage rates for those who keep track of business mileage. Now, for 2014, the mileage rate is 56 cents per business mile. Uh, but in 2015, it's going up by a cent and a half. It'll be 57 and a half cents. So just yeah. thought I'd add that. Yeah, so this is very important because a lot of people we have seen, you know, we actually finance a lot of businesses who come to us and they have their tax lien issues and everything. And a lot of this is, you know, because of, you know, these small things, uh, payroll tax is the other thing that we see. There's a lot of issues, you know, uh, which come up. Uh, so I think uh, people have to pay attention, small businesses have to pay attention to, you know, uh, how they're filing their tax returns or even, you know, their payroll tax issues, their quarterly tax issues. Because, you know, that's what lands them in a mess. And then they face so much of penalties. And uh, and also, you know, once you have that, then lenders look at you with a lot of risk. Because once you get an IRS lien, uh, you know, those liens supersede everything else. And that makes you, in spite of having a Princeton business out there, you know, that alone can, you know, make your credit worthiness of your business drop like crazy. Hmm. All right. Um, what's next, uh, Rohit? Are we going to uh, the uh, company corporation presentation or your presentation? Yeah, so I think, uh, uh, yeah, the next one is, uh, yeah, John. So John is here. So John uh, can talk about uh, CSC. John Meyer, uh, Director of Education for the company corporation. Hey, welcome, John. Hey, thanks, Anita, and uh, thanks, Rohit. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone uh, today, and I'm excited to share uh, some uh, thoughts just on uh, 2015, uh, specifically just around some ideas that you may want to think about as you're either starting a business or you want to go ahead and um, you know better protect your business as you uh, enter the new year. But what I want to talk about is really uh, some of the things that we do here at the company corporation where we help entrepreneurs and small business owners uh, go ahead and establish their business entity structure. So we're uh, talking to entrepreneurs um, all throughout the month. Uh, you know, millions of entrepreneurs will uh, come to our sites at incorporate.com or llc.com to learn more about the uh, process of incorporating. And really, when you start a business, you have a couple different uh, opportunities that you can uh, go out and establish your business under. And uh, probably the easiest way uh, to start a business is to become a sole proprietor. And this could be that maybe you have a hobby or you have an idea or you just want to test an idea and you go out and you basically go out and you get your business license at your local um, jurisdiction. So in many cases it may be your city or your county or maybe even your state. I'm joining everyone here uh, today from uh, Wilmington, Delaware, so uh, a small state, we would actually have a business license at the state level, but uh, certain states it may be um, enforced at your county or your state uh, or your city level there. Um, but a sole proprietor is simply you're going out, you're getting a uh, business license, and uh, you're going out and you're conducting business. So, um, you know, under that, the owner is going to report any business profit or loss on their own personal uh, income taxes. So uh, you're operating under your own social security number, your own taxpayer identification number. 
Um, you know, it's easy uh, to get up and running as a sole proprietor. The one risk here is that you are uh, leaving yourself exposed to any type of lawsuits that might be filed against the business. So uh, you're basically taking all your personal assets and putting them on the line as you go out and you conduct your, uh, your business. Now, your other option is you could go ahead and uh, set up a business entity and you have a couple different options with that. You can either file what's known as a LLC, which is a limited liability company, or a corporation. And many people might hear about a C corporation, which tends to be larger businesses. Many of your Fortune 500 businesses would be C corporations. Or a subchapter S or an S corporation, which many small businesses are a uh, S uh, corporation. And basically setting up either an LLC or a corporation just means that you're filing a either an article of incorporation or a certificate of formation uh, at your state level. And if you think about it, you're basically putting a brick wall between your personal and your business assets. And you're setting up a separate legal entity outside of uh, yourself. So think about your taxpayer identification number. You would be getting a tax identification number or a EIN, an employer identification number, for that entity. So it's an independent legal structure separate from the owner. Um, it helps separate your personal assets from your business debt. And there can be certain tax advantages when you incorporate. So uh, certainly something that you may want to consult a CPA or tax specialist on. Now if we can move along to uh, the next slide here, uh, what we'll do is we'll talk just a little bit about uh, some of the benefits that you get on why somebody would incorporate. And the biggest benefit would be this personal asset protection. It's, it's ways to minimize your risk as you're going in and conducting uh, business. So you're again putting that brick wall between your personal assets and your business assets. And one of the things that you want to do is make sure that you keep very separate records for uh, business and personal. So that would mean getting a separate checking account, getting a separate uh, uh, business credit card, uh, keeping separate records for invoices and paperwork uh, for your business. Now, uh, another benefit would be that you may get additional credibility and name protection. So. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses. I was actually just on a, uh, a tweet chat or a, a Twitter chat just uh, a little while ago where somebody was trying to gain uh, business or uh, new business, I guess, from a large company. And uh, that large company was looking for them to be a corporation or some type of legal entity. So they were able to get that business and get some additional credibility by having uh, in this case, an LLC uh, after their name. So it can give you some additional credibility. Uh, also, will lock in the business name that you're looking to have at the state level. Now, the third benefit that I wanted to cover here is really perpetual existence. And uh, what perpetual existence means is that your business will uh, go on in perpetuity. So. Um, what this would mean is that if the business owner did die, the business continues. It's separate from the business owner. Um, now, what this uh, really impacts is when you start a business, you probably either have a couple motives for starting in that business. Uh, uh, a lifestyle, you want to create some type of lifestyle, so you want to work for yourself. Or you're getting into a business to create an asset uh, build value in that asset and then sell that asset and have an exit strategy. Now by setting up a separate uh, legal entity, uh, a business entity for that uh, business activity, you're creating the, the vehicle that you can actually go ahead and start your business, um, build value, and then sell that business entity. And it makes it a lot easier to have transfer of ownership when you have uh, the structure in place. So those are a couple of the uh, benefits of why you would want to incorporate a business. Um, a couple other uh, just uh, last minute items here would be you might have uh, potential tax 
flexibility uh, with your business. So an LLC is taxed at the same rate as a sole proprietorship, but it does provide that limited exposure to personal liability. Uh, LLC, especially if you're a single member LLC, you're operating yourself as an LLC, uh, you can pull any profit or loss onto your individual tax return. So uh, there is some ease there from a, a tax filing standpoint. Uh, deductible expenses, um, uh, Anita was just mentioning mileage um, um, deductions and uh, uh, mileage reimbursements. You may have deductible expenses for both corporations and LLCs. So um, certainly one thing to keep in mind is when you do set up this business entity, you're creating an independent entity, and you want to treat that like it's um, it's a separate entity. It's going to have separate um, bookkeeping, uh, record keeping, and then uh, obviously financial statements and financial reporting for that uh, business entity. So a couple ways that you can think about getting your business set up for the new year and get yourself uh, started on the right um, on the right foot is think about what type of structure you want to operate your business in. Uh, think about some of those benefits that you do get, and then you can choose to either operate as a sole proprietor uh, or create some type of business structure, such as an LLC or a corporation. Okay, great. Hey, John, that was uh, really wonderful information. Uh, and that was uh, John Meyer, Director of Education for the Company Corporation. And I believe your URL is uh, incorporate.com. Is that right, John? Uh, that's correct, Anina. Okay, well, I know we're going to have questions for you at the end of the webinar, so please stay with us because I can already see some questions coming up, and we'll get back to you with specific questions, John, so uh, do stick with us there. It was very helpful. All right, uh, with that, I would like to go back to Rohit Aurora, the CEO of Biz2Credit, where we now get the outlook for 2015. I thought it was very interesting, Rohit, that you were saying it was such a good year for small businesses, and I've heard the same thing myself from so many small businesses who had struggled mightily for several years during the Great Recession, and now um, it feels like some things are starting to loosen up and ease up for them. Not for everybody, perhaps, and, and maybe not as much as they'd like, but it's certainly uh, been better um, this year than in some past years. So give us the outlook. Yeah, uh, so uh, again, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, so as I was saying earlier, you know, uh, in the last six years, I would say this is the uh, best year going forward, I would say, from an outlook perspective, uh, oil prices are at a low economy, is very stable. I think uh, there is uh, no political crisis as it per se out there, you know, uh, so with the Republicans controlling the both the Senate and the Congress, there will be less log jams uh, out there. So obviously, uh, you know, the key things here is that, you know, uh, and what I say is that, you know, uh, there seems to be light at the end of the of the dark tunnel, and it's not the incoming train, you know. So, which is always, I would say, best thing because we have seen some pretty bad uh, stuff out there over the last six years. So, uh, so just uh, you know, saying that about it is that you know. So, what what should a small business owner uh, look forward in 2015? I would say three things. You know, one obviously is that uh, you know the businesses which have uh, survived the Great Recession can now grow. Uh, a lot of small businesses uh, and small business owners who had lost their confidence in the economy in the overall macro environment. I think this is a time to you know uh, start thinking positive if they haven't done it till now. I think it's time to start thinking about you know uh, either uh, investing more money in your business or start looking for uh, more capital, uh, whether it's lines of credit or uh, or I would say any other kind of capital you're looking for. Uh, because the good news is interest rates are are still very low. Uh, oil prices have dropped down. There is no, there is no inflation pressure. So the consumers have a lot of money in their hand, and 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 if this continues in 2015, uh, the consumer spending is going to increase. That clearly means small businesses are going to get benefited. At the same point of time, there's a word of caution. There is that you know uh, uh, the nature and the and the kind of small businesses that will succeed is changing. So to today, as a small business owner any business you are in, it, it's very imperative for you to go and invest money in technology. 
So that's the second point. You know, you have to have a good website. You have to have a good online presence. You have to have a good, uh, you know, way to market yourself. So it's both easier, cheaper, but also more dangerous if you don't do that today. So any and every business, you know, whether they sell online or not, you know, having a good online presence is a is a great hygiene factor. You know, actually. Uh, and the third thing is, if you're planning to grow your business, if you are planning to acquire an existing business, then this is the time to do it because if you if you wait for another year, you know you will be late. That I can tell you. So you have to have the ability now to go in and you know uh, just start thinking about it. Don't be afraid because I think the time has come that if you really want to grow your business, uh, you know obviously every every business decision that you take has a bit of a uh, risk involved out there. But uh, uh, but I think this is a great time. A lot of businesses, uh, if they want to expand and take it to the next level. Yeah. Anita, can you? Uh, are there any slides that we can go through? Or, uh... Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. So let's uh, talk yeah. about the challenges facing CPAs. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, I think I think the. The key thing is uh, here is that you know what we are seeing uh, is that you know uh, we are seeing as I said every business is changing so including accounting businesses including CPA businesses including small business owners so CPA businesses are being threatened you know by the fact that you know if you remember you know almost everybody used to go to their accountant or a site you know uh, where uh, uh, offline, you know, uh, to get the tax returns filed, and to today, majority of the personal tax returns are being filed online, you know, self-help kind of stuff. So I think for them, it's a big challenge, uh, you know, for uh, uh, the accountants. And why we have t taken this example is that, you know, accounting profession has been considered a very stable profession for the longest period of time. But even such a stable profession, which is controlled by small businesses, the majority of small businesses are facing a big challenge right now. And I would say the combination of technology, the combination of people having less time to go and visit uh, their accountants or to sit down with them is actually, you know, doing uh, that, uh, is like creating those issues. On the small business side, you know, the key thing is that, you know, still, I think the bad news still is that banks haven't still come back into this market. Banks still are, so they're loosening up their criteria, but still they're sitting on the sidelines. So while the interest rates are at a historical low, you know, we haven't seen a lot of movement from banks right now in order to, you know, go in and, uh, you know, start lending more money. Uh, we foresee at Best Credit that that's going to change in 2015. So that's why it's a good time that if you are planning to raise any kind of money in, in 2015, this is the time to get all your paperwork in place, every, you know, file your taxes on time, ensure that you have no tax liens out there. And then the other thing is that, you know, um, uh, is that you know we also should have the uh, vision as a small business owner to really plan ahead because as small business owners you know people get so busy on a day to day running the business and that is something you know which is very important uh, you know uh, you know about it is that you know what are we doing you know with uh, with our businesses and uh, you know that's where you know we have to uh, you know work with our partners. So let's say we have accountants, so we have to you know, work with our accountants, you know, get their guidance, you know, manage their, uh, to manage your finances well, you know, uh, uh, and then, you know, as an accountant, you know, use them for just not filing the tax returns, uh, you know, use them for, to actually, you know, uh, uh, you know, make them your financial advisor. Because that's the key, because mm. accountants are also being forced to change their role. And I think as a small business owner, you should also, uh, you know, demand that of your accountants that, you know, they're not there to just file the tax return or give you your tax transcripts. They, they should be there to you know, help you guide your business, how to raise money, what are the best channels for you, what are the best options what? for you as a small business owner, you know, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that, and uh, yeah, so, uh, so, so this slide really, you know, covers that, you know, when, you know, you have your, uh, uh, you know, uh, like what to do when you are going to your accountant. So obviously you are trying to take advice from them. You know, it's about building trust. And and that's where, you know, the fundamental problem that Biz2Credit is trying to solve. Because we work with a lot of accountants. 
we work with large number of uh, you know banks at the other end we work with small business owners directly uh, in terms of trust and relationship you know we have a free loan consultation for every single customer who comes on our platform you know they can get that uh, and there is no obligation to get a loan or to accept a loan for that you know all the small business owners have an intelligent dashboard that they can access to they have a biz analyzer score you know, you know that is built in there and that biz analyzer score you know helps them to you know really figure out how good their business is how good their cash flow is what are the things that they are really looking for to do you know uh, what the personal credit score looks like uh, you know what, what uh, are the issues like one one issue that we advise a lot of our small business clients and as what John Meyer said is that incorporate your business because the longer you keep it as a sole prop the less credit worthy you become as a business so so uh, so ha having incorporated your business is a big next step then being active on secretary of states filing all your uh, tax returns on time filing your dues with the secretary of state in every state that you have a business in you know is extremely important because what is what is there in the marketplace today is that if you go to a bank directly uh, or to a lender then you know there is lack of transparency so they might even re reject you because of the fact that you know you haven't filed that 20 dollars of your annual fee with the secretary of state that makes you inactive so so that's why we are giving all this stuff to business owners free so so this is free you can go and check stuff you can you know run your scenarios and everything and the whole process is that you know we we are trying to make it easier we are trying to make it simpler we are trying to lower the risk both for the business owner uh, owners as well as for the banks and other lenders and what we are also trying to tell the business owner is that uh, what you will get it it really depends on you so like you can literally self underwrite your own loan process you can build your own credit worthiness you can improve your credit worthiness if you want to do that so the ability to do all that stuff is in your hands you know so like what we have tried to do over the last 6 years in this market and now you know to today american banker even said that you know marketplace lending is the biggest innovation of 2014 and our whole premise always was that marketplace lending should increase the transparency it should shift the power of uh, you know getting a loan from the hands of a lender to a borrower because to today the lender is like you know sits on the top they can do anything they want to do and the borrower is really you know is really dependent on them and they have no idea no clue what they will get what they will not get and why they are not getting it or what price they are getting it so the whole concept of this to credit was to make it simpler but also more transparent and also you know give the power to the end customer so that it's in their hands okay you do these three things you will be able to improve your credit you you do you build a good website you incorporate your business your credit worthiness goes up and I think the best thing that you know we have tried to do there is that you know if you go to any bank today you have to fill out multiple loan applications you have and your credit will get pulled multiple times on a platform like this to credit you know we have created the ability for you to come and fill out one single form for all your loan needs and then you know you can actually keep moving forward with multiple loans on an ongoing basis and we give you a dock vault we give you the ability to go and you know pull all your business licenses and everything so we have a partnership with CSC where we do that you can check your U UCC liens uh, which are really known as uniform commercial code liens these are filed by your vendors your creditors you know on the business so we have a fully automated platform you can do that again in partnership with CSC and uh, then you know you can actually go and literally go in to today on this platform and can uh, also get your transcripts directly from IRS up to last four years so that's something very uh, unique about this credit platform that you can do that you can check that you can check you know what kind of uh, uh, tax returns were filed for your business how they are changing from a year to year and and the best thing is you can also set up a free loan consultation uh, with a loan specialist who are all best to credit employees they're in-house employees and they are the guys who are credit trained people and they will guide you through the whole process they will tell you where you are lacking in either certain paperwork or in certain credit issues and they will also help you to walk through the whole process and will help you to improve your credit worthiness over a period of time so that you become a better business and you get money at the lowest cost possible out there so I think that's where uh, the power of a marketplace lending comes in and uh, and by opening up a free account and by using most of the services which are free uh, we give loans to 
or to business borrowers and we don't charge them any money all our money comes from uh, the lending side of the business so so it's easy it's simple uh, and it's uh, and something that you can come back again and again get more money and you can do it at any time and the good news is it's it's there in all 50 states so you can do it from anywhere we also launched you know this year a mobile first platform which means that you can fill out the whole application through mobile you can download a best credit app uh, and why we have done all this is that we really want to help uh, to make the process easy we have a spanish platform so like if you have if if you if you speak spanish or you're more comfortable in spanish you can use that platform to fill out all the loan applications and the and what we are trying to do is that we are trying to consolidate small businesses and and then you know forcing lenders to become more efficient uh, and also lower their uh, cost of money for the for the business borrowers out there which is i think is a very important aspect because that shifts the control from the lenders to the borrowers out there next mm -hmm. slide yeah. all right yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Rohit, I know we're going to have questions for you, so we'll come yeah. back. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll do a, uh, a quick uh, webinar recap here uh, before we launch into the questions. Uh, of course, um, you know, remember that uh, tax codes are complicated. You do need to check with your CPA uh, and make sure you're taking advantage of all the deductions and all the credits uh, as well because uh, there may be some hiring credits for hiring uh, veterans, for example, uh, that you may be entitled to. Uh, there are many deductions. I mean, one of the great things about being a business owner is that you are able to deduct expenses of running your business uh, as long as they're allowed expenses under the IRS code, and that includes marketing expenses. It includes many um, technology expenses, uh, it includes um, you know, even uh, business interest and, and other uh, types of things. Uh, I know that uh, Rohit uh, was talking about retirement plans and that's one of the, the best um, really tax uh, shelters, uh, legal tax shelters of course, uh, that there are. And I just want to remind people that with some types of plans, you must make your contribution for 2014 by December 31st, 2014. With other types of retirement plans, you can you actually have until April 15th um, when you file your taxes to make your contribution as long as you designate it for the prior year. So be sure you know what the rules are for whichever type of retirement plan you have so that you don't miss that date. You want to take advantage of being able to shelter as much of your income as uh, you're permitted to under the IRS code. Uh, anything else you want to recap uh, about uh, uh, Rohit when it comes to taxes? No, I think I think one thing is I will again re-emphasize uh, the importance of being current on payroll. You know, if you if you have more than three four employees, my advice will be to ha like hire an external payroll company uh, because we see a lot of that issue you know happening uh, with businesses. Uh, you know, and just uh, you know, keeping all your bills in place, all your uh, you know receipts in place, because if you get into an audit, you know, then the IRS will demand all that stuff. So, you know, itemizing it, you know, using business credit cards in, instead of cash, you know, is important because that way you can track all your expenses, and you know, in case an audit comes, God forbid, you know, you can actually itemize and you can show everything. So, I think just being organized. I think uh, that in itself solves most of the problems for small businesses if they are organized. And that's easier said than done, uh, because running a small business is very tough. Uh, but I think that's a part of the game. You know that as small business owners, we have to do this part if we want to, you know, grow our business and maintain the credit worthiness of our business. Yeah. Mm, great point, uh, Rohit. And and yes, um, I, I definitely uh, echo what Rohit just said about outsourcing your payroll. Uh, you know, find a, a good, reputable payroll company, one that's financially strong, and uh, use them because they know what the rules are and they'll help you avoid penalties and um, other risks of not uh, following the rules. And, and there are many of them. It's hard to stay on top of them unless you're a professional. All right, uh, John Meyer, uh, if you'd like to recap, 
uh, for us real quickly before we get into questions. Sure, I'd be happy to, Anita. Uh, I just covered a couple of quick uh, items here today, and uh, really what I wanted to reinforce is uh, as you get ready for uh, 2015, if you either have a business or you're thinking about starting a business, uh, you want to think about how you want to structure it. So, um, you know, establish a uh, proper foundation for your business. You have a couple uh, options. You can either operate as a sole proprietor or you can protect your personal assets through incorporating or forming a limited liability company. Um, there are numerous advantages to uh, incorporating. Um, you know, beyond just personal asset protection, you do get increased credibility, uh, name protection, and then also some uh, potential tax advantages. So uh, those are a couple of the items that I wanted to cover, and uh, as Anita mentioned before, I'm happy to answer uh, any questions as we move into the uh, Q&A section of today's call. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, and then finally, uh, Rohit, uh, just if you would give us a quick recap. Yeah, so, you know, on the on the loan side, you know, what we are seeing is uh, more availability of credit. Uh, banks uh, are not, like, haven't loosened up their criteria, but what has happened is that business owners, their cash flow has improved and they have become more credit worthy. You know, we have seen the growth of marketplace lending, alternative lending, uh, you know, that has become a lot more mainstream, a lot better pricing. Uh, an example on this Fred platform, you know, in the alternative lending space, so last year we used to do products only which were, 12 to 15 months, we have started doing products which go up to 3 to 5 years and uh, the interest rates are 11 to 14 percent. They are still higher than what we offer on the banking side but but still very low compared to what was there last year which was like 40 to 50 percent, not on our platform but otherwise in the marketplace. Uh, so we are seeing a lot of that happening which is very good news for SMBs, uh, you know, more products coming in and all this is creating more pressure on banks to start coming back into the market, which, which we strongly believe that, that will happen, you know, by second half of 2015, uh, that banks will have to get more aggressive, which will be, I think, the best news for SMBs uh, in the last five, six years. So I think that's happening, and I think the key thing is just keep yourself ready, uh, clean, you know, uh, file your taxes on time, don't let any tax lien ruin your, uh, you know, opportunity to get a loan through banks. And I think, uh, uh, you, you, you know, you can keep using this to credit. If you're already an existing customer, we are launching a lot of new features in 2015, all free for small business owners. They can manage the cash flow. They will be able to, you know, get itemized, uh, uh, you know, reports on all the all their deductions. Like, say, for example, how much overdraft fee you are paying, how much wire transfer fee you are paying. So you'll be able to compare all that. And we are working very hard to introduce new products, better products, lower the rates for the business customers. So I think overall it's a good time for businesses. They should start looking to expand and and I think uh, if they are focused, they are, uh, uh, I would say, systematic and they and, and they keep their businesses clean. I think 2015 will be a very good year for them. Mm, that's good to hear and we'll, we will hope that that's the case, uh, Rohit. All right, uh, we've got a number of questions that have come in. So so at this point, I would like to move into the question and answer phase. The first question is for John Meyer of the Company Corporation. John, uh, someone writes, I don't like to give out my social security number when I complete W-9 forms for, for tax purposes. Uh, I'm a sole proprietor. How do I deal with that? Uh, it's a great question, uh, Anita. I believe, and I'm not an uh, expert here on this, but I believe actually as a sole proprietor you can also get a uh, separate uh, tax uh, employer number that you could use on a, um, on a form. But the, uh, the other option that you do have is uh, creating that separate entity which uh, really will uh, remove your social security number from W-9 so you could actually uh, go ahead and uh, form either an LLC or a corporation and then apply for a employer identification number which is essentially if you think about it, a social security number just for that legal entity so it's not paying in the social security but it's um, 
it's your taxpayer number for uh, the corporation. Mm, that's a good reason to uh, to actually uh, create an LLC, isn't it? So that you can protect your social security number, I guess. Uh, John uh, Meyer, another question for you. Uh, you mentioned uh, that a sole proprietor files on personal tax return. Uh, is there a particular schedule or form that you must use when you're filing as a sole proprietor um, to report your business income? I believe uh, I believe it's the Schedule C, but uh, I'm not a you know Rohit or um, Alan, if uh, he was able to uh, join us today, probably would be able to answer that. But I believe it's the Schedule C that you're pulling uh, any business profit or loss and putting that onto your uh, tax returns. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's true. It's Schedule C, and then as a lender, when they're looking to you know uh, do a loan, they actually look at Schedule C in that case. You know. Mm-hmm. All right, good. Uh, Rohit, the next question is for you. You mentioned that you developed a mobile-first platform, uh, and uh, that uh, it can be used for mobile devices. What does that mean, and what can you do on a mobile device uh, when using the biz to credit platform? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. So. What we have found out over the last you know, five years is that uh, small business owners are really busy people. They don't sit in their office, they don't have, uh, or they don't sit in front of their laptops, you know, they don't have time because they're running their business. And with the advent of smartphones, you know, everybody has internet in their hands. So one of the challenges that we, have, we always were trying to figure out was that, you know, loan applications normally are big complicated applications. But how we can, you know, uh, make that application so easy for businesses to fill through their mobile. So an example is if you go and if you search for business.com to play through your mobile, you have two options, either to download an app or if you don't want to download an app, you know, then uh, the site detects which device you are coming from, whether you're coming from a phone, an Android phone, an iPhone or a tablet uh, uh, kind of device. And then the, the way uh, the site changes itself. So what 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 it is called is a responsive platform. So the look and feel, the font sizes, the application uh, size, everything resizes itself according to the size of the device. So so that you don't have to scroll too much left or right. It's more like you know top to bottom, and that's easier for you to you know uh, fill out an application online through your mobile. And the and the benefit of that is that you can even start your application to fill through mobile and can finish it on a laptop. So let's say you you don't have time to sit in front of your computer and you start it from your mobile, you can finish it on your laptop. The other benefit when we say mobile first is that all the alerts you will get back on your mobile. So let's say you get a loan through this credit and you want to check how, how much you are paying every every time you are paying and um, uh, like a loan installment. You can check what your balance is. You can check what is the principal amount and the and the interest amount. You can because that's important because interest is an hundred percent tax deductible. So so you can get all that. You can set up you know your doc vaults uh, through your mobile. So what that means is let's say you have saved your tax returns and you've saved your other company documents uh, in the business credit doc vault, which is again is free up to 10, 10 GB. And you are on, on road or, or you are not in front of your laptop and you need some document urgently. Then you don't need to go into your laptop. You you can actually go download a, a business credit app, just log into it, and you have like literally up to 10 GB of your documents that you can you know use, review, send, share, review, edit, can do anything and everything from your mobile. So the benefit that we are seeing from that is, and we just launched it in 2014, and we have been so surprised ourselves that today 50% of our new customers actually start their application through mobile. Uh, and uh, or through a tablet, and and by doing this, you know, we are trying to make it easy. But we're also, you know, giving people the ability to come back, track their applications, track their loans, track their, uh, you know, other statuses. Because we have this whole biz analyzer, which now they can, you know, review it on their mobile, and they can see where, what they are doing. They can see the personal credit scores, or uh, you know, through their mobile devices, they can actually, you know. Uh, get an idea about you know what is what they are doing in, in their businesses how the cash flows are doing you know we have given them the ability to sync their business bank accounts through mobile uh, so that all the cash flow analysis can be done. 
So, so the aim always was to you know pick everything that you can do on your laptop on your mobile, and that's what we have done in 2014. Mm, that's great. And th that's a really surprising statistic too. 50% of new uh, clients are coming through mobile devices. Now, if, if nothing else says you need to have a mobile uh, re responsive or, or mobile accessible website, that type of statistic does. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think any small business today is not just having a website. You know, that was like five years back. But today, you you need to have a great experience through mobile. You know, because that's where your most of new customers will come. And and a lot of studies are showing that over the next two, three years, almost 80% of uh, the customer access point will become mobile. So, you know, I think if businesses are thinking just having a website will solve their problem, I think that time has passed. Now the time is to, you know, invest money and, you know, build it to a level where, where you know, it's easier for customers. Because so today, the good news is, that you can get a lot of customers online, uh, you know, world is your market, but the bad news is that the competition is a click away. So if you don't provide the great customer experience, you know, you lose your customers, you know. Hmm. Rohit, here's another question for you. How many lenders do you represent uh, through your platform uh, or have through your platform? And what types of lenders are they? What types of loans can you get? Yeah, yeah. So the, I think that's a great question. So we have very large set of lenders on our platform, almost between 1,200 to 1,300. And the kind of lenders that we have and the products that I will walk you through is, so we have micro loans, you know, that you can get through our platform. So all the major micro lenders in the country, including Axion and some of the other, uh, you know, micro lenders, including Valley Economic Development Corporation, which is the largest micro lender in California, are fully integrated into our platform. So what I mean by that is that, you know, you can come on this to credit, you know, fill out your application, get an option from a micro lender which will lend you money up to fifty thousand uh, dollars complete the whole underwriting process through the best of credit platform and can get an answer a complete answer in half an hour yeah, of that how much money you will get you know end to end then we have family offices we have endowment funds we have pension funds which start at fifty thousand dollars and can go up to half a million to seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars product terms anywhere between one to five years now interest rates anywhere between 11 to 16 percent uh, and that money you can use for the kind of products for working capital, for business acquisition, for buying a commercial real estate which is part of the business for a equipment financing. Uh, then we also have SBA lenders which are small business administration lenders who provide small loan uh, advantage program which, which, which ranges between 50 to 350, 50,000 to 350 thousand dollars interest rates of around 6% a year, again fully automated. So you don't have to go and fill out a large number of SBA forms offline. It's all fully automated through our platform. Your credit will not get pulled multiple times. It's soft pull of the credit initially. Only once you accept the offer, then the hard pull will happen. So it's actually reverse. Um, and then there are uh, traditional SBA 7A loans, which go up to $5 million. Uh, these loans, you can do acquisition, you can work in capital, capital improvement, retrofittings, uh, out there and then we have conventional loans uh, you know which start at five million start at a million half a million to a million and can go up to ten million dollars now uh, now the banks on our platform are some of the major banks in the country including td bank city bank uh, union bank of california bank of america wells fargo and a large number of you know small to mid-sized lenders you know who are using our platform oh very good very good uh, I've got a question now for John Meyer. Uh, John, the question concerns year-end filings. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about year-end filings if you're an LLC or a corporation? Uh, and what type of year-end filings are there? And what happens if you don't make your year-end filings uh, as you should? I guess there's a, a couple. Um points there when you start to talk about year-end filings, uh, if you are set up, you have your uh, estimated quarterly taxes, which you can pay, uh, or you have the option of, I guess, paying it all in one lump sum. Uh, so that's one thing to uh, consider. Um, year-end filings, uh, one thing to consider is if you do form a LLC or a corporation, you have the opportunity to um, 
uh, you file in a state, and then the state uh, actually has a what they call a annual fee or a franchise tax fee, which you're paying for kind of the right to do business in that state. And that's actually on a rolling period uh, throughout the year. So the state of Delaware, if you have a corporation, it would be due uh, in the uh, uh, March time frame and then uh, I believe uh, June 1st for LLCs. And I presume there are penalties um, that vary by state if you don't make the required filings and so on? There are, yes. All right, good. Uh, and what else should people know about filings? Uh, I assume that's something the company corporation can also assist with, like knowing which filings you have to make for your state or your type of organization, organizational structure, and when they have to be made? Uh, great question, Anita. Uh, what we choose to do is we help entrepreneurs uh, incorporate or form that limited uh, liability company, and then uh, we have a tool which is called Compliance Watch, which will trigger alerts to you and kind of walk you through the corporate compliance of things that you need to do to make sure that your entity stays in good standing. And by staying in good standing, that means that your corporate veil, which is uh, a fancy word for brick wall between your personal and your business assets, that that stays strong and intact. So we alert you to the filings uh, that you need to do as well as just the, the normal maintenance that you should do, the good housekeeping, having a separate business checking account, having your, a separate business credit card, uh, those types of things. Uh, to keep your entity in uh, good standing. Also from a uh, filing standpoint, a lot of folks uh, thinking about incorporating will say, you know, I'm thinking about incorporating, but it's December 18th. Uh, you know, I'll just wait until January. Well, one of the things that you can do is uh, kind of get it off your plate. You can actually do the uh, order now to uh, request your corporation, we can actually hold it until uh, January 1st, January 2nd, really with the state offices being closed on the 1st. Uh, you can pay for it here. Uh, you'll uh, go ahead and get it off your plate, off your to-do list, and uh, we'll actually file it in uh, 2015. So you'll have your uh, first kind of franchise tax that you'll have to pay would be for the year in 2016. Oh, great tip. That's a very helpful tip, John. All right, well, we are coming to the end of the, um, the webinar here. John, any final tip or piece of advice you want to close out with for small business owners? Uh, sure, Anita. Well, I uh, appreciate uh, your time here moderating today's session. I certainly appreciate uh, Rohit for uh, hosting us here today. And I just want to applaud everyone that's joining us here live on the webinar and then that will be listening in the uh, future. You know, uh, I think uh, you mentioned it before and I'm sure uh, Rohit has mentioned it. Uh, you guys are both uh, small business owners, business owners operating, and uh, you know uh, uh, just how hard it is. So I just want to applaud every uh, small business owner that's joining us or uh, potentially future small business owners that are uh, looking to uh, start their own business. It's, it's a hard path. Uh, it's certainly a rewarding one. Um, and there's a lot of help out there. So if you have a dream and you have something that you want to go out and provide a new product or a new service to help uh, people or companies out there, uh, go out, you know, seize the day, go out, uh, create your own path. There's a lot of help out there. There's great sites like Small Biz Trends. Uh, Biz to Credit is a great resource. The company corporation has a, a whole host of other uh, service providers. So you're not alone in uh, uh, you know, life's too short. Go out and uh, try and do what you want to do, and uh, there's plenty of help out there. <laughs> Great point. And again, what's the uh, website address of the company corporation? Our website address is incorporate.com. So uh, we operate incorporate as well as LLC.com. So uh, certainly look forward to uh, assisting anyone that's looking to form that business entity. And have a great holiday season, and uh, thanks again for having me.
All right. Well, thank you, John. And um, at this point, um, Rohit, back to you uh, and biz to credit Any final tips or points that you would like to leave the audience with today? Yeah. Uh, even this one, one question somebody asked, which I will do a very quick answer, how much time it takes to get an SBA loan. So SBA loan, you know, takes almost three months, uh, and there is a reason behind it because it's a government-guaranteed program. So. So there's a lot of paperwork to be done and a lot of due diligence. Uh, but at the same point of time, you know, Bistro Credit offers SBA loans, but we also have a SBA bridge product, which which means that, you know, we can give you money to our institutional platform for three months and then refinance it to an SBA loan, and Bistro Credit takes care of all that. Uh, so the final tips really are going back again is that, you, you know, guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, as a small business owner, you know, all the hard work that, we have done over the last five, six years to uh, or to grow our business or to even make it healthier. Is actually now is the time to reap the benefits. Now is the time to go and uh, you know do things which uh, we haven't been able to do for years. And I think uh, if you're looking for financing your business, if you're looking for you know just uh, grow your business, then you know we at Business Credit are providing a free free consultation which you can come and avail. You know, you have the ability to go and, you know, just fill out an, a simple application and one of our loan specialists will work with you. And I cannot understress the importance of, you know, something like Small Biz Trends, you know, which is a great source of information. All small business owners, you know, should be fishing for more information because in this age, you know, when it's information age, you know, it's, it's very important. And from a CSC perspective, I will say that, you know, we use them for our incorporation. You know, we have used them. We, we use them for our you know, keeping ourselves active on Secretary of State and everything. And I cannot underemphasize that, uh, you know, uh, aspect again, uh, because 2015, uh, you know, if you want to take the advantage of growth, you have to just keep everything totally clean, and that will help you a lot. Uh, and and I think, uh, and, and I would like to wish everybody happy holidays and a great new year, you know. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rohit. And again, the what is the website address for Biz to Credit, please? Uh, yeah. So the Biz to Credit website address is www.biz2 as a number two credit dot com, and uh, you can call us toll free if you want to do 800-200-5678. Again, it's 800-200-5678, and uh, we have our in-house loan specialist who are away, available seven days a week. Uh, so I want to repeat seven days a week. And that's important because we, we, we know that a lot of small business owners don't have time during weekdays. And we really want to, you know, uh, talk to every small business owner that needs some help. And that's why we are available out there. Ah, very good. Yes, great point. Well, thank you, uh, Rohit Aurora, CEO of biz to credit and thank you, John Meyer, Director of Education for the Company Corporation. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us today for today's webinar. And uh, this is Anita Campbell, the founder and CEO of Small Business Trends, signing off uh, today. Thank you, and happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. Bye.